Hey everybody, what's up? This is Devin LaVore coming at you with another encouraging word I hope will encourage you today. But you want to know what's funny? I already literally just did this whole video on this here computer. And it didn't take. <laughs> that is like never happened before. Like ever. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it was the enemy trying to keep the video from coming out or anything. No, I just think it was just technical difficulties. It could have been, but it's like, man, it's like, I just did this whole video and then it like died. It's like, it didn't, it didn't come out. And I'm like, that's weird. That's never happened before ever. Even on our old computer, that's never happened before. So I consider this that much more important. So I'm just going to do it here on our camera and I'm going to upload it that way because that doesn't fail either. Hopefully not. But welcome to the channel. <laughs> and I pray that this would bless you guys. And so what is the word from flatness to fatness? from flatness to fatness. Um, we've been talking in our family lately about uh, how flat things are. In the sense that we kind of just tend to do the same thing every day and we're stuck here in this, uh, this uh, hotel room a lot of times and we can't get out and we and you know we just have our schedule and the things that we do and the life that we live and all that and it's like man lord when are these promises going to happen when are you going to come when is this breakthrough and we keep getting constant encouragements from the lord all the time we have our god times morning and at night and the lord told us to do that a long time ago in march of 2017 he's like do this but we have done this faithfully ever since, you know? I mean, we've had some pretty awesome adventures on this seven-year journey that we've been on. Um, but we've never missed a day or a night. And it's just been really uh, awesome. And But there is a vision that we had that I got from the Lord in October of 2023. October 11th, actually. And we were up against some financial issues. Um, which were always seem to be up against financial issues somewhere in the always in this wilderness time that we're in um, and we we continue to believe that we're coming out of it and we're transitioning out of it and God's timing is his timing but we're, we're coming out okay and we're transitioning and all of this th stuff but the bottom line is we're still in this place right and um, Back in October, I got this vision of we we're coming up against these financial issues, um, but God always provides. There's always issues, but then there's always provision from the Lord. He's never failed us ever, not once. He doesn't do that. Um, and we've continued to trust him in the process, even when it's been hard and difficult and we feel like we're getting ready to go up against some serious stuff. And that was kind of what this vision was about. I was in this little fishing boat, had three benches, a middle one, and a front and a back. Um, and it was one of those little pointy, uh, kind of pointed in the front, flat in the back. Something you might go fishing with Grandpa in, right? Well, I was in this, and I was floating down this river, and I had no oars. And I was just sitting there, and I had, and and in front of me though was this waterfall. I mean, it was literally like right there, literally like 20 feet away from me, and I was moving pretty closely to it, and I had no oars, no power to save myself from what I was getting ready to experience, and I was getting ready to go over this cliff, over the waterfall, and that's obviously very scary and it looks basically you're going to die <laughs> you know if you survive that would be a miracle in and of itself right and so my heart was in a position of like well lord if this is the if this is where i'm at and this is what we're going to deal be dealing with then that's what we're going to be dealing with whatever i just surrendered myself i surrendered myself bookmark that statement i surrendered myself to just okay lord well, i'm going to continue to trust you even through this thing that looks like death. It looks like death. I'm going to trust you. Um, and so it was about March March 31st, I believe, 
from that moment on, there was this clear, clear, clear break um, in our financial support, right? Because that river represented our financial support, and then there was this break from it. Um, and let's just say that that river represented 100% of our support, right? I mean, it, it was not a ton, but it kept us going, you know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, it, it instantly, instantly dropped down to like 10%. <laughs> like, no joke. Um, and it just happened. But this is the deal. In the vision, I, I'm in the waterfall, and I'm going toward the waterfall, and I get right to the edge, and here's the waterfall. It's doing its thing, right? I get to the edge, and I just keep on going. I go off the waterfall, and in my boat, I just keep on floating. And I am literally all in the air. We're talking like Jesus walking on water type stuff, right? Um, and then my boat is just in the air and it just keeps on going as if it's floating on a river that I cannot see. It's a floating on a river of air. And I'm just like looking behind me going, uh, what? And then it just suspended for, I even made a video about it called suspended. If you can find that, <laughs> um, and we're just going along and it's like, whoa. And then all of a sudden, Boom, these wings come out from the boat. It was like they were attached to the boat the whole time, and I didn't even know it. Um, and there was three pair. There was a pair in the front, and the pair in the middle, and the pair in the back. And they just f flung out, and we just started floating. It was a different feeling than just the the constant going onto the air. It was like, whoa, because that really felt, it felt different, but it still kind of felt like we were on the river, even though we technically weren't. Um, and then when the wings popped out, that felt different. And then just above me was this huge brown eagle, right? Well, well, and that, that's what we've been talking about in our family. And then it came up this morning about there, there's just a flatness to our life. You know, when you look at an EKG monitor that measures your heart rate, it's constantly bouncing with activity. When it flatlines, it's, it represents death, right? And so... Here we are, we're floating, but what does that look like? It's a flat line, and it looks like death. Even though it looks like death, we are suspended in the most amazing miracle of God. We've allowed God to do this in our life, and he has proven himself. He has shown up in ways that we cannot repay, in ways that we cannot, like, re-bless. I mean, there's, it's like... We just have to surrender to the Lord and give glory to God for like the fact that we're still being sustained. Um, he's doing it. God will do what he's going to do and he will find, he will, he will find, even if the Saul of your life fails, he will find a David. You know, it, it what, what did Mordecai say to Esther um, in 4.14? Esther 4.14, he's like, hey, you... You may have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, but it's like if you if you don't speak, God will save his people. If not through you, he will use someone else. But it's like God will get done what he wants to get done, right? And it's like that's just kind of where we've been lately. But it's been flat. We've been just kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And just kind of that's where God has us. And we're just but all of our God times have been like amazing amazing but then we go on with our life and it's like god what are we doing you know what i'm saying <laughs> not so much what are we doing i mean we have faith we have hope but there's just a sense of flatness and the lord said listen today when he said there's a there's a flatness and the lord said but you're getting ready to go into fatness and so then he led me to isaiah 55 okay and i'm going to be reading from the amplified bible isaiah 55 wait and listen everyone who is thirsty now right away that's a qualifier isn't it you got to be thirsty in order for this to uh to apply to you you got to be thirsty and then you got to wait and then you got to listen you can't just do two out of three or one out of three or none of the three you got to do three out of three you got to be thirsty you got to be willing to wait and you got to be willing to listen okay it says come to the waters you mean the waters I just left behind on that waterfall? Anyway, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, 
simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. And so I think that that's kind of a funny thing going on there, where the Lord's like, come and buy, but you don't need money to buy what I'm offering you. You just have to surrender yourself to what I'm doing, and then that's what you buy. That's that's how you purchase things in the kingdom. You surrender yourself. How do you get into the kingdom but through the door? Who is the door? It's Jesus, and it's through his blood that forgives you and clothes you and puts you in a, 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 a spiritual garment of white, the righteousness of God, and now you are, you didn't have to pay for that. It was already paid for you. Mm. It was already paid for you. And you just surrendered yourself. That's the payment you made. You know what I'm saying? And so the scripture says, uh, or Isaiah 55 verse 2 says, Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for what does not satisfy? Now for us, that doesn't really apply because we do not even have money to spend on frivolous things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't have that kind of money. But even if we did, it's like what he's saying there, he's speaking to the nation when it was not in a great place, you know? And they're out there just doing all these things, finding all these other things that try to satisfy. In fact, we do have that kind of in our family honestly but it's 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 more with our kids where they're just the way they deal with the the hardship of the journey is to they tend to maybe want to go and do all these other things instead of sit in the pain and the weight and deal with it and we've taught them to do that god will teach he has taught us to teach our kids how to do that because it actually strengthens and develops you you may not like going to the gym you may not like running you may not like math you may not like history your science but you're gonna to have to learn how to do this stuff and you can't just you know what I'm saying you gotta you gotta do hard things and so you don't you don't want to go you spend your heart and your passion on things that aren't gonna benefit you and aren't gonna be God's will for your life you know if you're gonna suffer suffer in the will of God so that there's benefit and and a rate of return on the investment that you're giving to the Lord and he will reward you. You know, Hebrews 11, 6, Isaiah 45, 19. And it says, hearken diligent to me. Just listen and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness, the profuseness of spiritual joy. That was it right there. He was like, what I'm going to do, you just have to like you have surrendered when you came off the boat and you said whatever god if we fail we fail if we succeed we succeed but it's all going to be according to your will and by your hand he's like that's how you do it you surrender yourself to what god's going to do and let him do his thing you know and that's how you become fat now verse three says incline your ear submit and consent to the divine will and come to me here and your soul will revive and I will make an everlasting covenant or league with you, <clears throat> even the sure mercy, kindness, goodwill, and compassion promised to David. So this is what I believe. I believe the Lord is saying he's getting ready to reverse things. He's getting ready to turn things around. There's been a promise of reversing over our life for seven plus years. Um, and we're still waiting for the manifestation of it. But here the Lord is saying this. You're getting ready to go from flatness to fatness. Like... Your life is just going to be so totally different. It's going to be so dynamically different because of what God's going to do. But it's like, just surrender yourself to what he's going to do. Don't fight. Don't resist. Just let it happen. You know? And you're just going to see the glory of God. And God's going to, it's it's going to make you laugh. It's going to make you rejoice again. Um, it's going to bring you out of the grave. It's going to bring you out of a flat state. It's going to bring you out of this flat line. God's going to clear the way with his own personal defibrillator and you're going to have some activity again in here. You're going to have joy again in here. You're going to have excitement. The Lord said that to me recently. Ooh, glory to God. I hope I can make it through this. <laughs> but the Lord said that to me recently. He said, Devin, I want you to be excited again. And I was like, well, I, I, I will take some of that. I do too. But it's like, you've brought us through this. And of course, he knows why he's brought us through this, to form us and shape us. As he formed Adam in the wilderness and then he placed him in the garden. See, and I believe that 
that in itself is kind of like a flatness because he was all formed, but he, there was no life in him and God had to breathe life in him. And then, you know, that's when he became a living being and the God put him in the garden and that was a place of delight. And, you know, and that's, that was his fatness from flatness to fatness. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Joseph in the, in the dungeon, that's his flatness and then he was elevated to fatness um david out in the wilderness for 14 years and then he was elevated to be king the promise fulfilled joseph the dream fulfilled that was their fatness uh, abraham waiting for 25 years for this and never wavering one minute um you know, he's just in flatness, even when the, the, and then, and then with the birth of the promise, that's his fatness, right? But it's funny because even with Abraham, when he was, when he saw the Lord come during the times, like, okay, now's the time for the, the promise to be fulfilled. He was just sitting there in his, at the, at the front of his tent, just hanging out, just chilling, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what he was doing, you know? He was just doing his thing waiting on the lord not knowing when the time frame was going to happen but the lord came and told him here here's a time frame by this time next year and then they laughed and they're like really oh okay and so <laughs> and so uh but he kept going he continued to believe right and he saw the glory of god and so that's what i'm saying i feel like the lord's saying that we're getting ready to go to see the glory of God. We're getting ready to go from a flatness to a fatness. We're getting ready to go from a dungeon to a to a, a throne. You know what I'm saying? From barrenness to producing of promise. Yeah? And so, I hope that that blessed you guys. Um, I think that second take was better than the first one. I mean, you know. <laughs> Basically, they're saying the same thing. So if it's a word from the Lord, you can just keep on repeating it over and over again. Um, and by the Spirit of God, He can make it happen. And so, I hope that blessed you guys. It sprinkled your life with some encouragement. Or maybe doused you with some encouragement. Um, and until next video, we will see you later. Bye-bye.